Hey, in the last video, we are going to look into solids and how solids can be prepared for the analysis. Uh, solids usually need to be converted in some way to some kind of solution to be actually analyzed because a large, large majority of the methods that we have looked during this course uh, are capable of analyzing liquids, but not really very well analyzing solids. So one of the most natural ways of uh, going about uh, solids is to do a solid liquid extraction. And um, actually many of these methods are some formation of solid liquid extraction. But under the name just solid liquid extraction, we mean um, solid liquid extraction that uses uh, is carried out either at room temperature or slightly elevated temperature, uh, where the solid is just brought into contact with the um, uh, extracting solvent, and then it's somehow mixed, for example, and later the solid can be either centrifuged uh, to the bottom of the tubes when it's carried out in the tube or filtered out. Uh, this is efficient if the samples are sufficiently homogeneous and have small uh, particles so that the solvent can uh, interact with the sample very efficiently. Uh, because in order to actually be able to extract the analyte out from the sample, the solvent needs to get very close to the analyte. It needs to really get into the sample and then pull the analyte molecules out from that. Uh, sample material. And in case of some materials, it can be that this, uh, even though the analytes would distort very nicely in the solvent, this interaction between the um, solid material and the analyte is so strong uh, that we need to additionally apply some kind of initiation to get the analyte kind of extractable from the solid sample. And uh, one of these uh, sources is temperature, which can also be applied in solid liquid extraction. But sometimes that's um, uh, getting a slightly elevated temperature is not sufficient. And then we need to additionally uh, apply other methods. And in case of succulent extraction, where we use the same succulent uh, setup as we saw for liquid liquid extraction, we repeatedly over a longer period of time uh, extract the sample uh, with a very hot solvent. So this has two advantages. First, the solvent is warm, as well as it's done repeatedly multiple times, which uh, enables a more efficient um, interaction between the solvent and the solid sample. Um, and that with this, we kind of concentrate the sample uh, in this concentrate the analytes in the solvent that we use in the succulent extraction. There is also possibility for forced flow leaching, which is um, putting a sample in a kind of a tube where the solvent can flow through. Uh, but now we add a almost boiling point like temperature. So a temperature, we heat the system to a temperature where the solvent is almost boiling. So this means that the solvent is, um, is kind of as hot as it can to still be liquid, which means that we are elevating the temperature and uh, with this um, reducing the interaction between the solid and the analyte molecules and in increasing also the solvent's ability to permeate into the sample and actually extract the analyte out. Um, it's noteworthy that for dried samples, for example, dried plant leaves, one of the biggest problems is actually making an efficient connection uh, between the solvent and the sample. So to make the sample kind of leachable with the, with the solvent that we want to use for extraction. So sometimes we need to either um, uh, do this elevated temperature extraction or we can also do multi-step extraction in the, in the way that some of the solvents might actually leach the, um, might actually wet the sample better, but some other solvents might be better at extracting the analytes. So this can be also done in multi-steps. 
simple cases, which we, for example, also saw for the plants is a homogenization. So we just use a kind of a blending system to bring our analytes uh, or samples into homogenized form. And often these homogenized forms can be now sufficiently liquid to be treated as, li as liquids and, and do the further extractions as they would the liquid. However, sometimes these homogenizations still uh, are followed by um, kind of accelerated solvent extractions or forced flow leachings or solid liquid extraction. But even for these samples, homogenization can be important if the sample as such um, is, not heter is not homogeneous, has some, for example, heterogeneous particles, very common for, so for soil samples, for example. A sanication, especially ultrasound sanication, is very important. In case of um, biological tissue samples, ultrasound sanication is very, very common. And this is used. This is actually not the kind of ultrasonication bath as you would see in, um, in essentially any lab. These are special um, sonication heads that are having very high intensity so ultrasonic um, ultrasonic um, ultrasound sonicators, uh, and these ultrasound sonicators are able uh, to produce so intensive ultrasound that they break the tissue cells. And this is very important when we want to extract molecules out from the uh, cells. So, for example, if we are studying the total metabolite concentrations in some tissue samples, for example. With some samples, we can be lucky enough to just dissolve them. For example, if we want to analyze something in um, honey, for example, we can just dissolve honey in uh, slightly warm water. If water is uh, capable for, if water is also suitable for our analytical methods, then maybe we can go directly to analysis or we need to concentrate or purify it with an SP or liquid liquid extraction, but we can after the solving treated as it would be a liquid. And another very increasing popularity solid uh, sample preparation technique is accelerated solvent extraction, or a more generic name is pressurized solvent extraction. But you would see a lot of people using ASE as an abbreviation for uh, something uh, that they mean under which they mean actually pressurized solvent extraction. The long story short is that uh, officially accelerated solvent extraction is a commercial name and uh, pressurized solvent extraction is a more generic name. Uh, in this case, it's very similar uh, to the it's very similar to the forced flow leaching. So here also the solvent is, uh, is uh, brought to a high temperature, but in case of accelerated solvent extraction, the solvent is even above its boiling point, And we are using very high pressure standing equipment to, uh, to pump the solvent in the system and with this high pressure, high temperature system, the solvent is really capable of uh, of fermenting into the sample and extracting analytes out. However, this can be problematic if the analytes themselves are not very temperature resistant. resistant. So with some transformation products, for example, you, this really doesn't work because the compounds are uh, degrading during the extraction process. There are also automated solvent extraction, uh, solvent extraction, extraction degree techniques or supercritical fluid extraction techniques. And supercritical fluid extraction is actually very similar to the accelerated solvent extraction, but here we use supercritical fluid. Um, in very often people would like to use CO2 here as a supercritical fluid. Mostly, however, organic solvent additives are also used. So uh, it is that if it would be possible just to use CO2, the supercritical fluid extraction would be much more environmentally friendly than the um, uh, accelerated solvent extraction. But mostly we all still need to add organic solvent additives here and it's maybe a bit better. 
Uh, however, it is. Um, I haven't seen a really good comparison, but it seems that uh, accelerated solvent extraction is still a bit more popular than the supercritical fluid extraction, even though accelerated solvent extraction is kind of newer technique as a commercial instrument. Uh, and also it's possible to use extraction with microwaves and uh, it is it has two versions, either, either in a closed or in an open vessel. In case of solvents that absorb microwaves, we would need to use the um, closed vessels, while for solvents that do not absorb microwaves, also open vessels uh, can be used. And here the idea is in case of closed solvents that the solvent is absorbing the microwaves and therefore heat and also um, is extracting the analytes more efficiently from the solid cell. Uh, with all of these techniques, the main aim is actually to get the sample in the, into some kind of a solution phase so that the solution can be further analyzed as a liquid. So to sum up the analysis of gases, liquids, and solids, um, actually the most mm, convenient samples to work with are liquid samples. And both gas and solid samples, we often want to first turn into the liquid, and then we can start the extraction processes as the samples would be liquid samples. 